All right, folks, thank you for joining us. I am Benton from Cointelegraph, and today we're going to be diving into the future of creators. No more TikTok, tomorrow's tools for connecting with fans and building an audience your own. We have an absolutely stacked panel today um, filled with Bryce Carr, Matt Alston, Brandon Eng. And I want to go ahead and just get a quick round of introductions. Why don't I pass this off uh, to Bryce first? Why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and then what your project or company is doing in this space? Awesome. Thank you, Ben. And hi, everyone. My name is Bryce. I lead music over at a company called Rally. Rally uh, lets creators launch their own social tokens and NFTs. We work with creators to build what is really a, a fan community. And in many ways, for the music world, it's focused around the idea of a fan club. And through our RLY token, we fund that liquidity to give each of these communities real value. We work with a lot of the different partners on this panel and a lot of partners in the space. So I'm excited to be here today. Awesome. And we'll hand this over to, to Matt next. Awesome. Yeah, thanks for having me. Um, yeah, I'm Matt Alston, uh, one of the co-founders of Bonfire. Um, we're building uh, kind of the all-in-one utility layer on um, top of social tokens and NFTs is the way that we like to describe it. And so um, we support the Rally ecosystem um, and all that, all the artists that Bryce is onboarding, as well as um, Ethereum and Polygon. And we help creators um, build utility into their tokens through things like token-gated content, merch, and experiences. Um, yeah, I'm also uh, really, really grateful that you guys had me. So excited to chat today. Thanks for joining us. And Brandon. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. Um, hi, guys. My name is Brandon. I'm a partner at PureBase Studio, which is a Web3 studio that's launched a few really fun projects um, into the Web3 ecosystem and really just focused on the intersection of community building, experience, music, and entertainment as we kind of look into 2022 and beyond. So really excited to be here. Well, let's go ahead and dive into some of the topics that, that we're going to be getting into today. And I know Artists are, are really looking to own the direct access to their fans, uh, while fans are looking to own more of what the artist is creating. Um, so I guess one of my first questions is, is for Matt here. Um, now, when you've collaborated with some rally in, in the past, like how do you see Web3 potentially having an impact on where artists focus when it comes to building audiences and connecting with fans? Yeah, well, I think... It certainly depends on what your goals and ambitions are as an artist and also, you know, where you are today. But I think where the space is today, uh, for many artists, they're still going to want to invest in the traditional Web2 platforms when it comes to, you know, growing an audience, discovery, um, like really like finding those fans. Um, but I think where Web3 can already be extremely transformative for these artist communities is converting converting casual fans into super fans and then having a means to actually identify and engage directly with those super fans. Um, and that's something that, you know, really can't exist today. And so I think um, Web3 is really like more of um, a way to build a tight community around those super fans today, um, while the technology and the scalability and all of that still gets solved to be able to, you know, really build, you know, mainstream uh, great consumer applications. And so a follow-up to that is, is every artist eventually going to have like their own token? What does that kind of evolution look like in your eyes? I don't know that every artist will have their own personally branded social token necessarily, but I do think that every artist will use Web3 assets to build community um, and to build their sort of fan base in the future. So whether that be NFTs, fungible tokens, some combination of the two, um, and then whether those NFTs are, you know, like membership passes to a fan club or, you know, event tickets or, uh, you know, the actual content, the music itself. I think that every artist will will be using assets that are based on blockchains just because the economics are so much better for them um, and not like incrementally so, but like dramatically so. And the value prop is also better for their fans and community. And so I think it's really a win win. Um, I expect that every artist is using these assets, whether or not it's their own social token, if that makes sense. Yeah, no, totally. Uh, and those are awesome uh, insights there. Now, now Brandon, I want to go over to you next. Uh, you've been helping artists make this transition. What are you seeing uh, emerge from, from some of the most new valuable properties currently? Yeah, absolutely. I, mean, I think it kind of builds upon what Matt you know, just said 
Um, but you know, when I, when I spent a lot of time helping artists on TikTok, you know, what I found that TikTok did for artists was really democratize virality and attention, right? If you're creative, if you're authentic, and if you're genuine, you could leverage the platform to drive scale, right? You're driving tens of millions of people to your art or your music, you know, praying and hoping that some small percentage convert to listening to your song on a DSP, right? I think what Web3 really gives you, and, and like Matt just mentioned, is, is you're really able to now galvanize the super fans, right? You're able to leverage tools like discord like twitter like lalo to kind of really bridge the one-to-one -one fan experience and i think why that's flipped on its head is that instead of going to get 10 million people and hoping that 1,000 of them can convert you're really looking to get 5,000 or 10,000 super fans to really drive high value you know high value actions to kind of the project you want to push out. And when you're able to, to, to really move groups like that, you know, niche communities that are supportive of you and your endeavors, I think that really, you know, allows you to, to really kind of grow and, and really put your art out there as an artist. So yeah, like really interesting tools out there on the web three side that are being leveraged to, to push out community, to really cut through the noise for notification. Um, and then to also combine that with like mass market reach. I think those are all sort of things that artists are now able to leverage, you know, as web three is kind of, become more mainstream i real quick I'm, I'm curious to hear bryce like your insights as well like i what is one of the biggest emerging trends right now in this kind of social web3 space uh what are you seeing emerge and, and where do you think uh like the the industry is heading in in the short term yeah it's it really is a great question and i think over to the over the last years with the rise of dsps we've seen people become fans maybe of songs, but not really of musicians, right? People know these songs, they hear these songs, they come on playlists, they like it, but in some cases, they don't know what artist it is or how to be a true fan of that artist. And every now and then an artist can have a fan kind of break through that noise, discover who they are, and they become what is essentially a super fan. I really think that a super fan deserves a super treatment. And I look back at when I was a kid and I was on street teams for different bands and You'd show up at a, a festival and you pass out flyers and say, this band on this stage and everyone be there. And at the end of the day, you swing by the merch booth, the band maybe gives you a high five and sends you an MP3. You can't do that anymore like you could when I was a kid. Now I look at so much of what's happening in the Web3 world as a way for artists to give back to their fans. And by giving fans a coin or an NFT for completing some sort of street team action, be it pre-saving a song or buying a bundle with uh, with your tickets for a show, you allow the story to kind of extend beyond that one touch point to unlock future possibilities down the road. And when you empower your fan base, it's just natural for them to become more vocal and to better champion you as a musician. We know that word of mouth is the greatest marketing driver out there. And when I love a Web3 community that I'm in for my favorite artists, I'm sure it's heck more likely to tell everyone else that I'm in there and help them join the community as well. That's, a, that's an interesting point that, that you brought up in, in like, I, I guess like when we're talking web two, web three and kind of this disruption of the, the old model, um, like what is, is, are the web two ever going to catch up or is it the, the new players in the web three space that you think will ultimately provide that long-term value uh, for the, the super fans, like you said, and I'll, I'll pass this to Bryce first. Yeah. It, I mean, it, it definitely touches upon some of the benefits of blockchain that Matt was talking about earlier from like an economic model, but I think we'll see a lot of these web two companies embrace web three technology. Now, I think you saw this a little bit earlier on with some of the music industry curious, but cautious about web three. And I think when you saw NFT selling for a huge amount of money. That was money coming in that could have maybe gone to the label, right? And it's now in the best interest for the major media companies and the major rights holders to embrace this technology. And I'm beginning to see them do it in really thoughtful and smart ways. They're doing partnerships and working on strategic priorities for artists in ways that are beginning to make sense and not feel as artificial as they might have been. And Brandon or Matt, feel free to jump in here too uh, with, with any insights. Yeah, I mean, the only thing I, I would add is I don't, I don't really see Web three, at least in this sort of, um, you know, sub category of Web three. I don't see um, it completely like disrupting or you know us no longer needing Web two platforms. But I think what it does do is it offers this like extremely valuable and formerly missing like ownership layer um, on top of the distribution and consumption innovations that we have seen over the last couple of decades. It's just that the value was 
ultimately accruing to like, you know, a few people. And I think Web3 offers the ability for creators to, you know, issue and sell these assets. And those assets are, in, you know, recognized on blockchains. And that gives them the ability to also support their fan relationships around the internet and, you know, monetize more deeply from those super fans, but also reward them in ways that were impossible before. So I see that all as really like being complementary to what we already have in, in Web2. And so I, I do think that, like Bryce said, the Web2 platforms will embrace this to some extent. I think that ultimately there will also be like very big Web3 native companies um, that unlock new possibilities for artists. But I don't know if that comes entirely at the, you know, at the sake of Web2 platforms or if they go away entirely. Brandon, anything like you, you, you'd like to add there? Yeah, definitely. I mean, this might be a little bit different of a, of a take, but I think something that I've, I've found being in the space for a little, little bit is that like the web two companies that actually market the best in web three embrace it the, the best are actually like K-pop labels. I mean, funny enough, mm. they've been cultivating super fans and cultivating communities since the early two thousands, but they just did it in such a guerrilla way, right? They had fan cafes. They were doing these, you know, they have photo cards, they do meet and greets. They really do understand how to really supercharge the super fandom to ensure that their groups, you know, meet, you know, high ceilings of success. And I think what Web3 gives, you know, to, to what Bryce and Matt said is now we have the tools, we have the foundation, and you have a bit more of an infrastructure to, you know, do this at scale. And I think where, you know, a lot of where Web3 will learn is like a lot of the guerrilla tactics, the guerrilla tactics that a lot of these folks in Web2 kind of embraced before there were the tools and the technology to deploy these things. I think a lot of those same things can cross over into this space and, and you know, marry really nicely. So I think, yeah, really excited to see where, where how a lot of this stuff kind of comes together and converges. And, and something we haven't talked about yet is the portability of relationships uh, in Web3. And so that meaning that that artists can build these networks and these fans connections and rather than Facebook or Instagram owning them. Um, like, I guess I'm curious to, to hear what, like we'll start with Bryce. What do you think the portability might play out uh, and serve artists and fans in the future? What does that, like, uh, that portability look like across the space? Yeah, I think uh, one of the things we're going to see more of are creators launching NFTs and social tokens, and hopefully there'll be interoperability or those will be on chains that can be shared across different resources. I look at what we just did with Bonfire for Portugal Demand, who we work with, and Matt and the team helped us kind of set up this Portugal Demand hub where anyone who was a coin holder could come to one destination. Portugal Demand then owns the relationship with all the different artists, and when they've done tours through uh, like a pre-sale code for something through Ticketmaster, they've used that hub as a way to generate pre-sale codes for ticketing. And then when they've done some gated streams for exclusive content or limited edition merch items, they're connecting in through Shopify and Bonfire to be able to make it work like that. So I think what this is doing is allowing almost a little bit more of like a Lego or building block approach where creators can pick and choose from marketplaces what they want to speak the same language as their, their token, and then scale out from there. I think with time, we'll see more and more business entities, you know, like Shopify is exploring this in incredible ways right now, where you can just easily plug in your existing Web3 community into tools that are offered by different companies. And Matt, how do you think this, this portability will play out here in the future with, with artists and fans? Yeah, yeah, I mean, to be honest, I think it's it's probably the most important aspect of Web3 for, for these artists. And um, I think what it does fundamentally is it just shifts leverage from the platforms to the artists, the communities that they build. And so, you know, like Bryce mentioned, you know, an artist like Portugal Demand, because their coin is, you know, theirs and not belonging to any one platform, like they can use that currency across platforms. They can use it you know, IRL at shows in the future, kind of as that tooling and infrastructure layer gets built out, um, they can bring that wherever they go uh, across the internet. And that's a really powerful idea that didn't really exist in Web2. And so I think, you know, I'm a platform builder, I'm building tools to make it easier to, to use these tokens and to build communities around them. But ultimately, if Bonfire, you know, isn't doing right by artists, two years, five years, 10 years down the line, like, they can always just take their currency, go to another platform, and they still preserve the relationship with their fans. They preserve the community that they built. The only thing that they lose is the tooling. And so I think that's a really like um, just profound shift that we're still pretty early in like understanding. But I think this really is just like a leverage shifting um, 
you know, shift in the in the landscape that really is going to provide a lot more value for a lot longer term for artists in their communities. And Brandon, anything like you'd like to add there? No, I think I think they covered covered most of it. I think a lot of the the same ideas. All right. Well, I do have a question. So we'll start with you, Brandon. I, I mean, we've all probably joined a bajillion Discord servers. I don't know how much more we can we can potentially handle, but uh, how do you think fan attention is going to be divided in Web three? And will we see sort of a status arrive where we have deeper connections, uh, but some of this noise is reduced that that we're kind of seeing right now? Yeah, that's a that's a great question. I mean, I think the value of the fan goes up tremendously, right? I think no longer can you like I think what you know democratized platforms gives you is is like low attention, high reach. I think what Web three gives you is is kind of forcing the fan to choose where to spend their time. And I think where the fan spends their money and spends their time becomes extremely valuable, right? Like I then want to go support the five artists and, and put in a capital commitment to ensure that you know they're going to be successful to launch A B C D E F G thing. Um, I think you know one of the things that that I think is being interestingly solved for now is like like you mentioned, right? You know the Discord announced channels typically where right now communities that's the only place where communities can get notifications or to get updated on you know where the projects that they support or artists they support um, you know where they get updated on and I think there's a, ro- a lot of really cool tools out there that are trying to kind of bridge that gap leveraging connecting you know directly to a wallet or, or directly to sort of another um, you know port you know where where your your fan is really accessing a lot of the web3 stuff to, to really ensure that they're up to date so there's a tool that I've been leveraging for our community is called Lalo. Really cool where they essentially are solving for that Discord announcements tool, right? If I'm in 100 Discords, I get 100 notifications every single day. Instead, now my, you know, my my Discord project founder can then text all the people that are subscribed to their Lalo and ensure that they're up to date on anything that's happening. So you're kind of cutting through the noise there. And I think you're really, you know, hitting the folks that are kind of supporting you and that are driving, you know, your ability to move the needle as as a community. And Matt, I'll let you chime in next. Uh, any thoughts? How is this Web3 uh, fan attention going to be di- divided in the future, in your opinion? Yeah, well, first plus one to everything Brandon said. And uh, I think this is this is a really hard question. Um, I definitely feel the pain of being in too many discords. But yeah, I do think that, um, again, kind of harking, harping back on like the super fan idea, like I think that, um, you know, there's still going to be low engagement with a large number of communities on like aggregator like platforms. But then when it comes to like really being heavily invested in like a single artist community or a handful, like I think, yeah, then you are talking about time being kind of the finite resource there and people aren't going to be able to participate in a hundred different communities on the same level. But I think the artists and the communities that resonate most deeply is like then where they're going to like dedicate that attention and time and get a lot more back in return than they can possibly get on a platform today. Like, you know, a uh, uh, YouTube or any of these kind of like social, ag- uh, social network aggregators. So I think, um, again, I, I'm kind of, I guess, same answer, but I think it's going to add like a new dimension and a new uh, complementary element more so than it's going to like, you know, siphon off too much attention from from the existing uh, platforms. And Bryce, anything you'd like to add there? Yeah, I think the one thing that's important to add here is the idea of tiering. And when you look at how traditional social media platforms work, something gets posted and you can't really segment your audience that much unless you really pay for it. And even if you put something out there for everyone to see, no one's going to see it. And what's kind of cool about Web3 and, and going off of some of what even Brandon had shared with Lalo is like, there are easy ways to segment your audience based upon who holds this NFT plus that NFT or who holds 25 tokens and maybe a token from another creator that I'm just friends with, right? Like you can segment your audience in ways to break through all that noise in a much more impactful way where that funnel leads specifically to who you want it to speak to instead of having to pay big tech a huge amount of money to hope that it gets to that audience. You now own and control those channels. And something we we haven't really touched on, we talked about the fans, we talked about the space and the evolution of it, but now I want to touch on like the artists themselves. Uh, what do you think is going to be the biggest challenge for artists who are going to be making this move and shift into Web3? Or is there any challenges and it's going to be easy peasy? Uh, Matt, I'll let you jump in here first with, with some of your thoughts. 
I think the challenge is going to be there's no there's no playbooks there's no templates like we are we're building the the best practice library right now um, and so any artist in the space is going to be part of that process of needing to be experimental take risks like be comfortable with the discomfort um, but I think also being early in any space you know there's a ton of rewards for for being early and playing around in the space before it you know really is mainstream so I think that's the challenge but also the opportunity for artists today. Very good. Uh, I we are getting close here on on time. Uh, we appreciate everyone for jumping in and watching our panel today. Hopefully, you got some insights as to where Web three creator space is heading here in the future, and we appreciate you joining us.